Could this little microchip that's in all our devices be a reason that China goes to war over Taiwan? While Taiwan makes nearly all the world's sophisticated microchips, China relies on foreign technology for much of its microchip needs. So China finds itself in a situation very much like Japan found itself in 1941. Back then, Japan imported almost all of its oil, and when this was cut off by a US embargo, it turned its eyes to oil fields in Southeast Asia. That situation was the proximate cause of World War II in the Pacific, really. China today finds itself in a similar corner with respect to a similar critical input, which is the semiconductor. But will this alone tip China's hand? More on that later. What's clear is that tensions between China and Taiwan are at their worst in 40 years. And many are asking, is a war coming? And would it drag in the US? We're talking about the largest, most impactful war that the world has ever seen. Absolutely a real possibility that China is going to initiate force across the Taiwan Strait. Some disagree. They say armed conflict would cost China too much. There is direct cost of military confrontation. China could lose that war. A lot of people are going to die. So China could face sanctions, boycotts, tech bans. China has to face the problem of how to deal with destroyed Taiwan. But... I think the more that Xi Jinping thinks that he can get Taiwan by force at an acceptable cost, the more tempting that prospect becomes for him. Here are four signs that China could act on Taiwan. One, it's been turning up the pressure. In October alone, nearly 150 Chinese military jets entered Taiwan's air buffer zone. The Chinese government is saying to Taiwan, listen, we can hurt you. We can hurt you with our bombers, we can hurt you with our fighters. I believe they are trying to overwhelm our air force by forcing it to fly excessive hours. So this really wears down the pilots in Taiwan, their equipment, you know, they're in constant, constant use. China has also been accused of orchestrating disinformation campaigns on social media sites like Facebook. But the purpose is all about discredit our own government. They want to create distrust among our society. Two, younger Taiwanese are feeling less and less connected to the mainland. Public opinion poll that show a growing number of people defining themselves as exclusively Taiwanese. Because I was born in Taiwan, I grew up in Taiwan. I never thought myself of being affiliation with China. I think that Beijing finds that very, very worrisome because it makes them more pessimistic that they can achieve their goal of unification peacefully. If all of that hope evaporates, then the risk of China using force will grow. We cannot rule out any, any, any drastic situations, you know, if Taiwan calls for independence. Three, growing U.S. support for Taiwan is stoking China's anger. The U.S. government has been sending mixed messages, wrong messages. President Joe Biden seemed to depart from a long-held U.S. position when he said Washington would defend Taiwan from an attack by China. The White House dialed back on that, though it did approve $750 million in arms sales to Taiwan. Other actions that have upset China include inviting Taiwan to a democracy summit and supporting greater participation by Taiwan in UN agencies. China is worried that Taiwan might actually be able to find a pathway to having other countries accept its claim to us being an independent sovereign state that is separate from China. If they could back Xi Jinping into a corner, he might be reluctant to be seen as soft on the Taiwan issue. At this November 2021 summit with Biden, Xi warned that whoever plays with fire would get burned. Which brings us to four. So China has a will, now increasingly has a way. Look, what really worries me right now, China's been building up this incredibly formidable military. China enjoys the largest Coast Guard in the world, the largest Navy, it has the most advanced cruise and ballistic missile program in the world. It's one of the largest air forces. So they have the numbers. But also in recent years, their technology has become much more advanced as well. 
For instance, in August, China reportedly tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile, which travels at over five times the speed of sound. They're very fast and they can also maneuver, uh, which makes it difficult for early warning systems and then missile and air defense systems to intercept them. But such sophisticated weapons need, you guessed it, microchips. And that brings us back to our original question. Is that possible that Beijing wants to take over Taiwan because they can take over the semiconductor industry? I would say probably not. They will just ruin the industry. I think there are a lot of reasons why this would be a difficult move. The fabrication facilities in Taiwan are probably the most technologically uh, sophisticated manufacturing operations in the history of the world. Uh, they are built on 99.9999999% purity quality metric for just about every input. If you add one grain of sand in 12 Olympic-sized swimming pools, that would uh, prevent the, the system from operating correctly. That a military takeover, even if you didn't literally have, have bomb damage, I think there are so many possible ways in which that grain of sand could slip into the system. Hollywood stars have had to say sorry for calling Taiwan a country.